In today's video, we will be mainly focusing on how to create an OAuth application using GitHub. I'll explain you the complete process in a way that no one has ever explained. I really hope you are not only watching the videos, but also implementing and practicing the work we do. If not, I urge you to please do the same because only watching videos or reading tutorials will not help you. We will discuss in depth each and every component we touch. So let's get into it. First open your web browser and go to github.com and if you do not have an account, it's free, you can create a new account. After that, log in using your username and password. Now we want to use github as a provider which will serve as authentication server and resource server. To do that, we need to create an OAuth app in github which is the main topic for today's video. For that, first you need to go to settings by clicking on profile icon on top right corner. Now on the left side navigation panel, scroll down to the developer setting. This is the place where all OAuth apps will be available. Now click on OAuth apps to see more details. Here you can see I already have one application test created but for today's video we will create a new application and that same application we will use in our next video of Spring Boot implementation. Now to create a new one click on new OAuth app. Here we have to provide few mandatory and few optional details. Let us understand each of these details. First one is application name. Let us continue the same example of wishit.com. Now the main question is who is required or responsible of creating OAuth app in GitHub? Is it the resource owner also known as user or is it the client which is wishit.com? It will be the client that is wishit.com because this website wants to delegate the authentication responsibility to GitHub instead of implementing on its own. So let us name our OAuth app as wishit.com. The next mandatory field is homepage URL. As for this demo, we will be running our application at local. So let us give the localhost URL with port number. The homepage URL is a publicly accessible URL that represents the main entry point of your application. By defining localhost as homepage URL, GitHub allows localhost URLs specifically for testing purposes. So you don't need to expose your development environment to the internet. You can test how user interact with your application's OAuth flow locally before deploying it publicly. In production environment, you should set the homepage URL to your publicly accessible domain. So for our local testing, let us provide localhost colon 8080 as homepage URL. Now moving ahead, next field is application description. Although this is an optional field, but it is always better to provide details under this field. Let me provide some sample text here. Moving to the next field, authorization callback URL. This is one of the most important detail in OAuth app. We will discuss this in detail. It is the URL where OAuth provider, which is GitHub in our case, will send user back after they have successfully authenticated and authorized. So what exactly is a callback URL? The callback URL is the endpoint in your application that receives the authorization code from OAuth provider. Once the user grants permission, GitHub redirects the user back to this URL along with an authorization code. Your application then exchanges this authorization code for an access token which can be used to make authentication request on behalf of user. If you remember, this is the exact working of authorization code flow. But you know what is awesome in this case? We don't even have to create this callback endpoint in our application. This is the default OAuth 2 callback endpoint for Spring Security's OAuth client. In our case, the provider will be replaced with GitHub. When you configure Spring Security to handle OAuth 2 logins with GitHub, it expects GitHub to redirect back to this particular path. This endpoint is divided into two main parts. One is slash login slash OAuth 2 slash code. This is the standard path Spring Security uses to handle OAuth 2 authorization codes. And this will remain as it is even if we change the provider from GitHub to Google or Facebook. The second part is the name of the provider. This part indicates the provider that you are using for OAuth 2. Based on provider names, it will find the client ID and secret details from your application.yaml or properties file. Let us try to understand why do we need to set this callback URL in GitHub. GitHub needs to know where to send the user after they approve your app. This is why this property is configured in OAuth app. If the callback URL doesn't match with what you have in your GitHub OAuth app configuration, 
GitHub will reject the OAuth flow with an error. Let us see how complete flow will work and the same we will be implementing in our next video. First we open wishit.com. We do not want to create an account in that particular website but we want to reuse the details from some other provider. So we have an account in GitHub and luckily wishit.com has implemented OAuth2 in their website. There we have an option of login via GitHub. So we click on login via GitHub button. There we are redirected to GitHub's authorization page. There we provide our GitHub username and password and also approve wishit.com to access my details from GitHub. After successful login, GitHub redirects us to the callback URL which is configured by wishit.com's application with the authorization code. The callback endpoint is not explicitly defined in our controllers. Instead, Spring Security automatically handles it. Spring Security listens to the incoming request at slash login slash OAuth2 slash code slash GitHub and processes the authorization code. Wishit.com then exchanges the authorization code using its client ID and secret for an access token from GitHub. After successful OAuth2 login and token exchange, Spring Security will redirect us to the page defined in our security configuration for successful login. It can be slash home or slash profile, whatever we have configured. I hope how this callback URL works is clear to you. In case you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. Now moving to the last configuration, which is an optional one, which is enable device flow. So in the last video, I have asked you to go through a website and understand about the remaining flows in OAuth2. If you have already done it, then you know what this option is for. If not, don't worry, let me explain it. The device flow is an OAuth authorization method designed specifically for the devices that do not have a web browser such as TVs, gaming consoles or IoT devices. When we enable device flow in our GitHub OAuth app, it allows users to authorize the app without requiring browser on their device. Instead, they can use another device like their phone or computer to complete the authentication process. Let us understand how this works. Suppose if we want to use GitHub account on our smart TV, for that authorization flow will be initiated from TV. It will display a unique code along with a URL like github.com slash login slash device. Then we open that provided URL on a phone or computer and enters that unique code and logs into github.com. After logging in, we can authorize the app on GitHub. This device will then receive authorization result allowing the app to access users github account. In our case, we are not using this app to authorize any such device, so we will keep it unchecked. That's the only information we need to create an OAuth app in github. Then just click on register application, it will navigate to the created application details page. Let us see what all details we have here and what all actions we can perform. The first information under general tab is ownership information. This tells us the GitHub username of owner of this application. There is also an option to transfer the ownership. If you want to assign some other user as owner of the application, that is also possible. Just click on the transfer ownership and provide the required details in pop-up. Next is you can list your application in GitHub marketplace so that the users can discover it. As of now, this application is not discoverable. Next is the number of users and token issued under this application. It also gives an option to revoke the tokens that gives you more control. Then we have client ID which will remain same what was generated during the application registration and the corresponding client secret. As it is a fresh application registration, so for the first time we need to generate the secret. For that click on generate a new client secret. Be very careful and note this secret down somewhere because once you move out of this page, the secret will not be visible again. You can generate different secrets also and delete them if not required. But the condition is at least one secret should remain there after initial creation. Just below that there is an option to upload an image which will be shown to the user along with your application name during authentication process. Below that you can see all these configurations which we have already defined during the registration. So if any of the information like name URL, callback URL are required to be changed, 
that can be done from here. After making all the required changes, click on update application. Apart from the general setting, I can see there are two more options available. One is optional feature, which is not live yet in GitHub. And the second option is advanced option. In advanced option, there is only one action which you can do, which is to delete your application. So this was all about creating OAuth application in GitHub. We will be using the same application in our next video to authenticate via Spring Boot application. You can also try to create OAuth app in GitHub and the same can be used when you practice in parallel with me in our next video. I really hope you are not only watching the videos but also implementing and practicing the work we do. If not, I urge you to please do the same because only watching videos or reading tutorials will not help you. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new today, don't forget to give us a like. Also subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any new update. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep learning.